Hey guys, it's Vic. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so, I am back with a chit chat um, little winter evening video for you all. And I just wanted to make this because a lot has been happening in my life lately. And I'm so open with my YouTube family. Um, and you know what? I felt like this video might give you some insight to kind of like what's going on in my life. As well as if you're struggling with any anxiety or anything of that nature, I figured this will help somebody who might be struggling. Um, I've always been very open about my anxiety journey. I've done quite a few um, like anxiety help videos on my YouTube channel, ASMR style, of course. And I just figured that this would, you know, this might help somebody. So let me start with what's been going on lately. And like, yes, I always talk about the podcast and making an ASMR comeback and neither of those seem to be happening as quickly as I'd like. So let me just start there. Um, so the podcast was something that I started thinking about, I would say probably last year, and then it kind of came to fruition more as the year progressed. Um, I think I mainly thought about it because I am a stay at home mom and, you know, a lot of moms that even stay home that I know do have part-time jobs, um, because of the... I don't even want to say the word. It rhymes with splanemic. <laughs> um, because of that, it kind of obviously put a halt on me even thinking about getting a part-time job because of all the rules and restrictions. And then they were cutting back on like hours. Um, I told my husband I kind of always wanted to maybe just be a waitress a couple days a week. I know everybody says they're called servers, but I say waitress because I'm almost 40 years old. So that was just the terminology I grew up with. Um, so I always wanted a waitress. And then when everything happened and they kind of started shutting things down, it was just not feasible. And I would have been perfectly fine, um, you know, going to work during it, but nobody was hiring because everything was closed and the capacity levels were really, really low. So that was when I kind of started thinking about the podcast because I was like, okay, well, aside from ASMR, what am I really passionate about? Motherhood. What can I help people with? Or not even so much help because I'm not an expert, but get information out there that other women might not want to feel so alone. Motherhood. Um, so the podcast was definitely like something that I really wanted to pursue and I'm not going to go into it because it's not number one, my story to tell. And I'm not the kind of person that's just going to bash somebody, let alone somebody I really didn't know that well. Um, but I was really kind of banking on doing it with the girl that I had initially felt like, her, you know, her life situations, probably even though we were on opposite ends of the spectrum. We were very similar. Um, I kind of wasted time like waiting around for her. So when it didn't work out, I kind of got like a fire under my ass, so to speak, where I'm like, I don't need anybody. I'm confident enough that I can do this myself. And I still feel that way. But I have to be honest, my passion for actually speaking with people and reaching people is there. But I feel like some of the gusto is gone for, you know, some of the wind is gone from my sails with wanting to do this by myself. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of in a funk right now. And I'll explain a little further because um, that kind of ties into anxiety. So, you know, I was talking to my husband about it and I said, I feel like I've made really good headway. Like I've started the Instagram page and I try to post on there. I said, and I have a whole, um, episode list planned out. I have some really amazing women that want to be on the podcast, but I said to my husband, it's not that I'm not feeling it. I'm like, I just feel like it's so much more stress and strenuous doing it by myself 
because I'm home with two kids all day, every day. And the whole point of doing the podcast, even though I'm comfortable speaking clearly on a camera to the YouTube community, um, I really liked the idea of having a co-host because I wanted somebody else to talk to and engage with. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of like stuck. I don't know what to do. Um, so my husband actually said, well, he's very logical and he has actually really good ideas. Um, so my husband said, well, why don't he, he said, you know, you have your backdrops, you have your ring light. He said, and I know you're tired and I know that that's what's stopping you from kind of revamping your ASMR channel. Um, as he said, you're exhausted. When I put my son to bed at night and I lay with him, I fall asleep. And once I fall asleep, I'm out for the whole night because <laughs> I'm exhausted. So I joked with my husband and I said, you know, like, will I ever not feel tired? I'm just so tired all the time. And yes, I've had my thyroid checked. I've had countless tests done to make sure because I have really bad health anxiety and I'm perfectly healthy. Um, so my husband said, okay, well, why don't you just focus maybe and do your ASMR? He's like, you're good at it you like it. He was like, I think it will be relaxing for you because you have to be quieter and you don't have to worry about like waking the kids up at night. You have the whole basement to do it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I just, just finding the time and the, the energy to do it. Um, and then he was like, well, what about if you like asked your subscribers or viewers? Um, my husband laughs, not that you guys are like, Oh, I love your ASMR and like I watch you because to him I'm just me to you guys I'm somebody else through you know the internet but he's like how do your subs feel like he he's not mocking me he's doing it in a playful way because that's just my husband's personality um and I'm like why do you say that trust me like I'm a very small channel and he's like what's up girl how's your subs like he just he thinks he's funny he's got jokes um so like I said to him, I'm just me and I'm just a pain in the ass and to everybody else, you know, that's why I think I try to be so open with you guys about my life and just about everything. Cause I'm just a normal person. Like I'm sure you guys look at like Maria who's quote unquote the queen of ASMR. Like, Oh my God, she's a celebrity. And even if I had as many subscribers as her and I was as popular, I would feel like I'm just me. You know what I mean? Like I just don't. I don't know. I would be the worst celebrity ever because there would be no boundaries between, between me and people because I'm, I would be like, do you guys want to be friends? <laughs> um, so anyways, he said, you know, like, why don't you do your ASMR or he suggested, and he said to ask you guys, he goes, what about if you made a video talking about all this stuff and you got some like really good ideas and suggestions? He said, why don't you tie in your podcast talk but just do it on your ASMR channel and I said well the problem with that is the people that don't know I do ASMR um I, they're not going to be able to find me because I'm not going to I'm only going to broadcast that to like you guys does that make sense what I'm saying so yeah I need I just I don't know um so that leads me to why I really haven't been doing anything and that's leading me into the second segment of this video of what's kind of been going on with me lately with anxiety and life. Um, so, okay, we live in a horrible, horrible um, state in the country. I hate where we live. I've always hated where we live. Even before all this crap started in the world, we've just, nobody ever wants to stay where I live. Like, it's just, I hate it. So my husband, we've always wanted to move to down south to the Carolinas and I have a little bit of family down there, not much. Um, so my husband has been applying to all these different jobs in both North and South Carolina. And, um, obviously I'm not going to tell everybody wh which one we're going to move to if, and when we move, I'm just going to say the Carolinas. Um, so my husband just recently got offered a really great job, a really great job in one of the Carolinas. And essentially we would have had like a month and a half to pack up our two children. You know, we're going to be trying for a third, our house, our family, our life, everything, and go down there. I was like, 
all set to do it. And then the more I looked at his schedule, his new schedule, um, my husband is a chemical operator in a factory. So it's like different shifts, days, midnights, and I've adjusted. I've adjusted quite well. Thankfully, when my husband works midnights, um, my mom comes to, which is nice because like we're on much better terms. Um, my mom comes to always sleep over like, um, literally every single shift that he's on midnight, my mom spends the night with the kids and I, cause I'm just a cry baby and I don't want, I don't want to spend the night by myself. So that all being said, he was, sorry, I'm walking around my house. If you guys can hear the floors creaking. Um, so essentially he was offered the job and we were, I'm like, Oh my God, let's do it. Let's go. And then reality kicked in and I'm like, wait a minute. We would have to rent like an Airbnb or rental for the first month or two that we were down there until we started looking for a house based on the fact that the mortgage companies need to see like your first pay period on paper. And even though I'm sure we could find a beautiful place, that's a huge pain in the ass when you have two toddlers. And then I kind of feel like me trying for a third baby would be put on hold because even though I had really good pregnancies, I'm like, ugh. I'm scared to be pregnant a third time because I'm almost 40. Um, so essentially where we're at is he had to respectfully decline the job because it was forced overtime. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the factory plants, um, the factory he's at now, they do not force overtime. If he wants to work overtime to make extra money, he can, but they cannot legally say, Hey Nick, you're staying at this place they can and because they're so hard up for employees i think that that's why they were going to pay him so well because they would probably make him stay like every day and we're, that's like a 16 hour day and that's just not feasible for my family when i'm going to be living in a different state with no help with my kids so he's continuing to look but once it happens it happens so we plan on going down there for a vacation which I'll definitely try to get some video clips and pictures up when we do um, to visit both of the Carolinas next month. And I'm already like freaked out because as much as I want to move, this is where the anxious part of the video is going to come into play to maybe either offer comfort to somebody else who struggles with anxiety or just make you feel like you're not as alone as you thought you were. So I've struggled with anxiety my whole life and... I don't know if it's the fact that I'm not going to lie. Like I've never touched a drug, a cigarette. I don't drink. I don't take great care of myself. I'm a busy mom. I barely eat all day. I just pick my kids leftovers. I don't drink enough water. I don't exercise and I sleep like shit. That's just the reality of my life. And I'm not complaining. It's my fault because I don't have the energy to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and go downstairs and do cardio or work out to make myself feel better. So I just struggle. Um, and it's not even for me about losing weight. It's just about feeling better. Although I could probably stand to lose a few pounds since I had kids, but that's neither here nor there. So essentially where I'm at with my anxiety journey, sorry, I had to take a drink, is, um, I just am in a funk. I don't know how to explain it. Like I'm not depressed. I'm not panicky. I just have an overwhelming sense of uncertainty and I don't know if other people get that. The thing about me is I'm an empath and I'm very, very, very spiritual. I always say I'm more spiritual than religious, but I've just been in this like weird funk. My mom seems to think it's seasonal depression. She's like, we, we see winter like six, seven months out of the year in the state I live in. It's freezing. I don't go out much with the kids because it's a pain in the ass to bundle up two kids and take them out in sub-zero temps. And, you know, it's kind of like where I'm at. My mom's like, I definitely think that's what it is. Um, she, she was like, I think that a lot of it too is you're busy, but you're bored because I don't associate with a lot of other adults. And I kind of just feel like my life is on autopilot in the winter. And then what happens is if I feel uncomfortable in my body, again, I'm associating all this with my anxiety, I start to go over and over and over in my head. Okay, what could be wrong with me health-wise? 
And my husband, being the very logical man that he is, he goes down the same list that he always does. And he says, Vic, you have had test after test after test. You are healthy. You're tired because you're a mom. And he's like, you don't drink water. You barely eat. You don't exercise. So what do you expect? <laughs> like, I get no sympathy from my husband in that department. And he's right. Um... I get that being married to somebody with anxiety is like very, very taxing. So it's not that I can't share it with him, but my husband doesn't have time to be anxious because number one, that's not his personality. Number two, he gets to get out of the house and go to work. And he's just, it's, it's hard. It's hard when people don't have it, but I've been with my husband uh, 12 years in April. So like he, he knows me. And he knows how I, the perfect word is internalize things. So now I'm on this kick where I'm like, I really want to move away. But, you know, like even us taking our trip, we're driving because I do not fly. Don't judge me. I don't fly. I've never flown. I, you won't even catch me stepping foot in like a plane. Like I won't even go take a tour of a plane because I'm so claustrophobic. I don't care how open it is. I don't want to know anything about it. So that puts kind of a damper on our life that we can't go anywhere that we have to fly because I won't fly. I'm sorry. I just won't. Especially with the state of the world. Hell no. So essentially where we're at is like, I'm already like, Oh my God, what if I like panic and freak out in the car ride down there? And <laughs> my husband's like, Vic, you'll be fine. I'm with you. The kids are going to be with us. You're going to be fine. And although I hate the state I live in and you know, we're outgrowing our smaller home and I'm getting cabin fever. I'm comfortable here because this is my home. We've been here for eight years. Um, so this was my husband's logic. He said, honey, he said, anxiety from what he's read about it and learned about it. He said, anxiety comes and goes. He goes, I've seen it for the last 12 years in you. And your anxiety is basically going to follow you whatever state we move to. Whether we stayed here or we moved away, you're going to have periods where you feel anxious. But it always subsides. You're okay. You're healthy. And my husband's motto in life is, don't worry about something until there's something to worry about. And I'm like, of course, it's easier for you to say because you don't worry about anything. Um... I'm like, what's it like to be you? <laughs> I think we're a good match because he's so laid back and I'm so damn uptight and freaking wound up like a, like a top all the time. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm just in a really weird funk and I'm going actually to see a medium. I know some people don't believe in that, but I do. I'm going to see a medium in March as well. I'm really excited about it because she's very, very good. Um, so I'm, I'm going to find out a little bit more, but it's the weirdest thing. I just went from being so certain about everything in my life. Like, yes, I want to move away. Yes. I want to have another baby. Oh my God. The podcast. Oh my God. I got to revamp my ASMR. And I feel like I'm just stuck and I don't know. And then, like I said, I internalize everything. So physically I feel those symptoms where I feel like, you know, like last night I was saying to my husband, oh my God, I'm so dizzy. I'm so tired. I'm so, and he's like, drink some freaking water. You don't drink water. <laughs> um, so I don't know if anybody else feels like that, but I definitely like to hear from other people because I think as much as I might help you guys, you have no idea how much you help me when you comment and when you say, oh my God, I get it. I feel like that too, because then I feel like, okay, I'm not alone. And it's easier for me to give you back advice on like, just breathe, this too shall pass because from the outside looking in, I just feel like it's easier to give advice. So I don't know if the funk really is like a seasonal, I've never been a depressed person. I've always been an anxious person. Um, it, it is a lot. My health anxiety has definitely improved greatly from what it used to be. Um, when I do worry about health anxiety now, my number one scare is because I'm a mama and I never want to be away from my babies or, oh, I can't even talk about it. I could cry. Um, 
So yeah, I think that what happens is my general anxiety gets internalized and manifests into a physical symptoms, if that makes sense. That's truly what I think is going on. But then because I feel anxiety physically, I internalize it as a health issue. Like, oh my God, this is it. I'm dying. And my husband's like, you've been dying for 12 years and you're fine. Um, and it's the habitual, like, I guess we could call it hypochondria. It's the habitual, like, if I had a full workup right now and found out that everything from head to toe was perfect and right on point, and it probably is, I would be fine for another few months until I thought up something else to worry about. And I know, because I've had the, you know, these chats in the comment sections with some of my viewers and subscribers before you guys who suffer from what I do are like yep that sounds like me um so yeah I just I don't know the funk that I'm in is just something that's very mm, foreign it's very foreign to me um and I guess that's part of why I'm so on the fence with everything is because I'm just all of it. Like I was so certain of everything. And then one day I woke up and I was just like, yeah, I'm unsure of everything and I'm scared of everything. And I hope this medium can kind of shed some light on why I feel this way or what's causing it. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. I mean, nothing is bad. I'm grateful every day for my life, but you know, like my husband said, you're, you want to move away, you want to move away. And then when it comes time to move away, you're like scared to do it. And your anxiety is going to follow, like not follow you, but it's a part of who you are. And one thing that I think I'm going to start doing is I definitely think I need to start meditating. And I definitely think that an important thing with anxiety is, um, sorting through your thoughts like irrational from irrational and once you can kind of do that and gain a little bit of perspective and put things into perspective you just feel better once you can rationalize in your mind um you know like okay for example I'm already picturing yes we live in the Carolinas and it's a beautiful sunny day and I'm having fun with my kids but because it's an unfamiliar place to me I'm already like oh my gosh my husband is at work for an 8 to 12 hour shift and I'm having a panic attack and nobody can come and save me because everybody lives back home. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's like something that I'm already stressed about. And my husband's like, well, have a panic attack in the sunshine then. You know, like he's just, I don't know. I appreciate the sense of humor behind it and his intent, but it's tough because things seem so easy for him and I feel like I struggle to do normal things. Like I will have a good maybe three to six months where my anxiety is completely at bay and I'm totally in tune and attached to everything and then now I'm on this kick where I feel very unattached. And it's not from reality, it's just I feel blank. You know, like obviously I feel overwhelming love for my husband and my children. But like I said, the passion to, the ideas are there. And the passion was there, but like putting this podcast on hold and redoing my ASMR. And just, I feel like I'm almost like a college kid trying to find her place in the world, if that makes sense. So I'm curious to know spiritually what the meaning is of having this void um again a lot of it too seasonal depression cabin fever um so yeah it's a struggle it really is but whoever you are wherever you are whatever you're feeling please know that you're not alone because I feel that way and it's tough and it's hard when you're a mom and you feel this way because when I used to rant to you guys about anxiety before I had children, it was just me where I didn't have to tuck it away. I could feel the feelings and be done with it. But with my children, I don't want them to, um, I don't want them to see that side of me. Not, not that I don't want them to be familiar with anxiety, but 
you know, when you're a mom, you're busy. You have to pack all that stuff away for like a, another day because you don't have time to worry and stress. So anyways, that's my rant. I will keep you guys updated, but feel free in the comment section for sure to, you know, A, lend some advice, but maybe give me your thoughts too on like how I can kind of combine the podcast or revamping ASMR or something that you guys might like to see. I mean, I love that people love my ASMR and it's something that is relaxing and fun to do. Um, but yeah, I just, I love being transparent with my viewers and I just wanted you guys to know how I was feeling and give you an update and offer some comfort if you're feeling like that. Um, so I hopefully will come up with a solution for what's happening um, and find a happy medium middle ground and then be able to start at least coming up with some shred of a filming schedule or something. Um, I think I just have to do it. I think I just, like it's taking that first step and it's tough when you're in a funk. So a happy winter wherever you are in the world and I will see you guys in the next video.